Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome, if you're new here, my name is Rebecca and happy new year to all of you. So I'm so excited that you're here and I have some of my favorite DIYs from last year and some of your favorite to share with you today in this compilation of easy, budget-friendly Dollar Tree home decor, room decor DIYs and I have an assortment for you. Everything from larger size like wall art, wall decor to things like plant holders, vases, candle holders, so many different easy DIYs that you can make for home decor and room decor on a budget. So I hope that you guys will enjoy. Definitely let me know which one of these is your favorite or if you think you might recreate any of these and let's go ahead and get started. So for the first one, I'm taking four of these signs from Dollar Tree. Now these are from the fall, but they usually carry these for all different seasons throughout the year. So four of these, to attach these, I turn it on its long side and add a little bit of gel super glue in the center there, and then a little hot glue on each end of that, and then just press two of them together. And I just continued doing this all the way, connecting the longer side to each other. And I've got four of these across, and this is just going to make like a little tray. I think it kind of looks like a wood tray when it's done. So once I finish, it, finish attaching them, I just go ahead and paint this whole thing over with some white chalk paint. I did have to give it a couple coats here just to make sure that I covered all the letters. You'll probably need two or three coats, but you could do it in whatever colors you like. And you could also go back and add some antique wax or a little bit of a darker color to kind of give it more of an aged look if you prefer. I decided to use mine just as is and paint it with the white chalk paint here. Go ahead and let that dry and then for the handles I thought this turned out really fun and so creative. I actually took one of these little wooden snake toys that they have in Dollar Tree now, cut off the head and the tail part and then just cut that piece in half down the center and it's enough to fold and make two handles. Now you could attach these on the ends if you want, kind of on the outside part. I decided to put them on either end but sitting on top of my tray and I just attach them with a little bit of hot glue. You could obviously use super glue or whatever you want for this and up to you if you want to paint them but I love the way that the painted white wood looks and this natural wood for the handles. I think it turned out really pretty like this and definitely it looks like something that you might find in a higher end store. So I am really happy with this for about five dollars. Today I'm making a little storage jewelry box jewelry organizer using five of these wooden bamboo cutting boards starting with one of them. I'm going to use wood glue. You can also use super glue or hot glue for this. Um, you can get those in Dollar Tree if you prefer. I think the wood glue costs just a few dollars and it's lasted me over a year. So for me, I think it's worth it to just get the better paint or glue in this case. So you do you, <laughs> whatever works. So I'm going to add the glue on both sides on the longer sides and then place two more of these cutting boards standing up with the long sides glued together now i'm gluing these to the inside of that first piece which is going to be like the back part so the back is exactly still just one board wide so hopefully that makes sense <laughs> So they're kind of glued on the front of that back piece. Now I'm going to take five of these plastic storage drawers. These are also from Dollar Tree. Great little organizational pieces. And I thought they'd be really cute for this little jewelry box DIY. So I'm adding a little bit of hot glue in between each one in order to glue and stack all five of them, like five drawers high. Now back to the wood frame, I started with gluing the top board on so that the excess part was kind of extending over the back, but you're going to see me change that up in a minute. So what I ended up doing, I glued the bottom piece on. I felt like we needed a bottom part of this for sure. So I glued the bottom piece on now and I lined it up with the sides and I let the extra length of the cutting board part here now extend off to the side. So now what I decided to do was take the top part I was able to kind of remove it it had not fully dried so I was able to kind of remove 
move that, twist it around, and I just reposition that on here so that it would also overhang to the same side as the bottom piece. Now I carefully add some hot glue inside the opening that we've just built here and then I just quickly and carefully slide the unit of drawers right inside, right into place. And once everything is in the right place like this, let it dry overnight at least a few hours. I think they recommend like 24 hours to let this cure. So I just came back the next day to go ahead and do this. You're going to want to wait before you attempt the next step. So you'll really want the wood glue to be fully cured and dry. For the next part now, I am making some little jewelry hook necklace hanger organizers. And to do this, I turned this jewelry box upside down and I'm gonna glue four of the Tumbling Tower game blocks vertically, like lengthwise against the inside corner. So they'll be like coming down, like long ways coming down from the roof, basically. And then I glue one more block with the short end glued on perpendicular to the bottom of those first blocks that we attached. So we basically have these 90 degree right angles sticking out from under the top overhang part. Now I did four of these little 90 degree angles, four hooks, but you could easily fit five or six of them under here. And these are gonna be perfect to hang bracelets or necklaces on. It looks super cute just like this and is 100% totally practical and functional so you can just stop right here but I really wanted to try some white paint pens that I found on Amazon I thought these would be really fun along with some Dollar Tree stencils and then see if I could create like a pretty white florally type pattern on here on the wood I just thought it might look a little bit more unique and high-end maybe something anthropology inspired or something also maybe a little bit like boho bohemian I thought it would be just kind of cool so I wanted to give that a try now if you don't want to use the paint pens and the stencils you could also try some of the little white fabric paints that i've seen in dollar tree that are like in a little squeeze bottle it will be a little bit raised like it'll dry a little raised on there but you could also draw you could easily draw with that white paint and create some designs on your wood like that so totally up to you if you like the solid look you know go for it really easy just leave it or you can paint and create a design on here and just make it extra custom and personal I also forgot to mention that I wanted to go back now and also glue four wooden blocks underneath in the corners like little feet. That is another option if you want to for this little jewelry box organizer DIY and I am obsessed with just how cute this one turned out. an 18 inch wreath frame from Dollar Tree along with some leftover ribbon so you could use whatever you have for this I'm just using up one that I had laying around that I have no other plan for so I thought you know what I'm gonna just use it as a base for this wreath and you honestly you don't even need to cover the whole wreath just basically you want to kind of cover about half the form you know just so you have kind of something to glue your flowers onto or to tuck the stems in between so I just wrapped this all the way around the wreath and as you can see I I did leave some spaces in there now once that's finished i just glued it again at the end here so i actually have three different types of pink flowers here the majority are two different types peonies and then i think these are mums or asters and then i did have these other ones that i don't know they kind of look like zinnias or something to me i don't know what dollar tree is calling them but i could only find one bouquet of those so i don't have many but i did also grab some of these little glitter berry flower things and dollar tree has lots of these in different colors for spring i grabbed some pink ones and i'm gonna do a whole bunch of pink on this wreath so i basically started by taking 
these this first set of pink flowers and grouping them in two so i have kind of one facing more toward the inside of the wreath one facing more to the outside of the wreath and i just did them kind of side by side together like this all the way around and i i did try to space them out evenly before i glued them in place so that i had an idea where they were going to be going and then i spaced out some of these little darker pink ones here that I just had one bouquet of and I'm going to kind of see where I want those but before I glue them in I'm going to go ahead and add those peonies in now which I basically did kind of on both sides of the first flowers that I added in here and then I came back with those pink glitter berries and I'm adding those in between the other flower bunches and clusters of flowers and that's basically all I did for this. I just glued everything on into place. You can actually kind of bend your flower stems if you want so that you can add a little glue and then kind of tuck them underneath behind the ribbon. That'll also help hold it in place. But just gluing these on to the ribbon and tucking them in, I filled in all the way around, leaving a little space at the bottom here. You could obviously just go all the way around with this, use a few extra flowers and fill it in. For me, I thought it would be fun to add a bow on here. So that is what I'm gonna do. And for my bow, I'm starting with a nice a big pile of deco mesh. So I basically just folded this over on itself like 18 inches or so long and then fold it back and then fold it back to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, make a few folds. And then I just gathered it and tied it off in the center. And now I'm gonna do another like little bow on top of that. Now for this one, I did it kind of with this rose gold mauve pink color this one is actually from hobby lobby i got it back at christmas time but um, you could get some pink ribbon from dollar tree as well in their spring section so just use whatever works for you i already had this so i'm going to use that i tied a little bow and then i also took one of these sheer pink ribbons also from dollar tree's spring section and i, I love this shiny pretty it's like a sheer light blush pink with a shiny edge to it so pretty so i just layered these on here as a beautiful bow and that pretty much completes the look i think this is just absolutely so pretty Now onto the next one. I'm creating a set of tiled wall panels, taking three of these square wall decor signs from Dollar Tree. I'm spray painting them white. And then once they're dry, I'm using just over two packs of these black and gold foil puffy stickers, also from Dollar Tree. And I space them out to kind of create a square in the center of each square panel here that's going to be five stickers high by five stickers wide. So you will need 25 squares for each panel. You could easily hang these with some small nails or command hooks. They're very lightweight and very easy to hang up. I just love how they look in a set of three like this. Personally, I just really, really love how these turned out. They are so pretty and so easy and inexpensive to make a really budget-friendly DIY wall decor piece. For the next one, I'm taking three of these wooden square pencil holders from Dollar Tree. Now, I'm going to take two and actually glue them together and do that i'm going to use a little bit of super glue and a little bit of hot glue wood glue would definitely work amazing for this but you know i just grabbed the closest thing i know that being a lightweight candle holder you can use kind of whatever you want here and then the other one i'm just going to kind of flip over and just use the one single wooden candle holder by itself now to make the tops for these candle holders i actually have two of these little cardboard boxes from dollar tree they have them in their craft section and i am going to use the square top portion of both of the two boxes so i'm going to save the two boxes for a different diy and i'm just going to use the two tops for this one and I'm actually going to glue those on now. I just used a generous amount of hot glue to keep that in place and this makes a nice square top that you can set an LED candle in. You're not going to want to use real candles because you have wood and cardboard here 
but this these are just going to be so so pretty i love how these turned out and i mostly use led flameless candles i really enjoy my led flameless timer candles they're battery operated and they turn on with a timer every single day at the same time so i just really love that i did want to go ahead and spray paint these I, I wanted these to have like a silver or a gray base and then i'm gonna take these silvery blue gray puffy stickers from dollar tree and you are gonna need probably um like four and a half packs i think i used to cover the whole thing of you know all four sides of both of these candle holders they took more than i thought i thought four packs was going to be enough but i actually needed a fifth pack in order to complete them but look how pretty these turned out i just absolutely love it and they're going to look so great with cooler tone decor silver gray blue neutral decor these are just so pretty and i think they look so glam and so elegant very modern I just absolutely love how they turned out and now that I think about it, you could definitely do a set like this and use those black and gold stickers that we used on the wall panels and you could do candle holders with those as well. I think those would also look like really cool tiled candle holders if you wanted to kind of have like white, black and gold instead of this blue, gray, silver tone. But yeah anyway let's go ahead and move on to the next one i'm taking an 11 by 14 canvas from dollar tree and i'm gonna take some hot glue and basically start in the middle and just make stripes of hot glue kind of making this like a sun like a starburst sun from the center making lines going all the way out to the edge in every direction now if you're wondering why there's some yellow hot glue there first of all i had a couple different brands of hot glue so i just was i have mix and match glue sticks with different brands and some of them are cloudier than others some are more clear some are more cloudy but it doesn't really matter because we are going to be painting over this um the other thing is i think i left my glue gun it was kind of sitting for a while because i was working on some different projects and i think the glue was like heating up too much so anyway i'm not sure combination of those things is i guess why i have some yellowish hot glue there but yeah just in case you're wondering now i want to add a blue base onto this so of course the glue dries pretty quickly and I've got some blue chalk paint here. So what I'm actually gonna go ahead and do is get a little bit of water in my plate here. I just have a paper plate that I added some water to so that I can dilute some of the paint. So in the center, I'm putting the chalk paint like directly on, but then toward the outside of this starburst, toward the outside edge of the canvas, I'm actually diluting it quite a bit in water. So it's more like painting watercolor than chalk paint um and but that way i have a little more i'm able to just kind of customize it a little bit more to get like a very light blue for a background and keep almost keep it where i have some white and some blue but with the center a darker blue so hopefully that makes sense i really wanted to keep kind of a variegated color in here and um, be able to just see some depth and dimension. Of course, you can always go back in with a little more white paint if you want to brighten and lighten up your photo a little bit more, just in case, you know, if the blue is too dark and moody and starts overpowering it. And I did have a little bit of some shimmering silver um, acrylic paint by Deco Art, so I, I brought in a little bit of that. It, honestly, I had very little left in this jar, but I figured, hey, I, you don't even need much, but I just put a little bit of that in there.
And then the other thing I'm gonna add in is actually I tried adding some glue on here, but then I got to thinking instead of the glue, um, because I wanted to add a little bit of glitter and sparkle into the center of this, I decided to actually just take some silver glitter paint from Dollar Tree and put that all into the center and then kind of drag it out from the center in all directions to get like a little bit of that glitter and sparkle. And then I also dusted over this whole thing with a little bit of blue glitter. So just very lightly over the whole thing with the blue glitter. I did decide to add a frame to this. So I'm gonna use an 11 by 14 frame also from Dollar Tree. And I was very undecided on whether or not to make this frame white or use that metallic, um, that shimmery silver. Comment below and let me know what would you guys use? Would you do this with a white frame or would you do it with a silver frame? But anyway, here is how this beautiful piece of blue and silver wall art turned out. I just think this makes a beautiful piece of wall decor on a budget and it was just really fun and easy to make. I'm excited to show you guys this one because I have had one of these plastic trifle bowls from Dollar Tree for quite a while and I have so many plants. I love plants. So I ended up creating a little planter out of this and it fits my plant, my new baby pothos plant so well. Um, I ordered on Amazon so I can put a link below if you're looking to get one of those but you can also pick those plants up like in Home Depot and Lowe's and stuff like that. And this made the very perfect pot for it and i actually just placed the planter it came in right inside this when it was all done and that way this kind of catches any water runoff from that pot and like the size is just absolutely perfect so anyway i am taking some of these tumbling tower wooden game blocks here from dollar tree and if you guys didn't know they have a new larger pack which is like twice the size so definitely a bang for your buck pick that up if you see it because it is a super good deal but i just honestly hot glued these all the way around i did too high so it comes up a little higher than the trifle bowl was but i love the extra height on here and then for the base i painted the bottom part with some black chalk paint you know, you could save yourself a little hassle here if you just wanted to like spray paint the bottom of this black before you go ahead and glue on your wood because then I had to be careful that I didn't get paint onto the wood. So anyway, maybe paint it first. <laughs> I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So, you know, sometimes crafting is like a step-by-step -step process in order to find out exactly how you want your project to look. But anyway, here is how this one turned out. Let me know if you guys think that I should stain this wood or not, because I'm kind of debating now if I want to go back and stain it and kind of have like a little more, you know, like a little more richness to the color, or if I should leave it with this really light color wood. What would you do? On to the next project now. This is a DIY lantern that kind of gives me the mid-century modern boho vibes, but with wood and rope, it's very neutral and it would work probably for any decor style. I added just a dot of wood glue in each corner and I glued on a long wooden dowel. Be gentle with this and definitely give them some time to dry before you attach the top piece, which I did by just again adding a little bit of wood glue on top of each of the dowels and then placing the top bamboo cutting board piece on top of them. Again, give this some time to dry. Wood glue is gonna be your best hold, but hot glue will dry a lot more quickly if you are in a rush, and it just doesn't hold quite as well over time. Once this was all dry, I glued the wooden squares onto the corners of the bottom piece. I wanted to make some little feet for this, and I thought it looked so much better like that. As I was doing this, I started thinking, though, that the wooden dowels that I put on the sides, they look so narrow and spindly for just the overall size of this lantern. So I think I'm gonna fix that in a minute. But first I cut a piece of this white rope that Dollar Tree is carrying. I knotted the ends and then I just hot glued this right on top of the lantern. Obviously now this handle is for looks only, which was fine with me because I don't usually walk around carrying lanterns for light. 
Mine are just more of a decor piece, but if you prefer, you could always make two holes in the top wooden piece and drill two holes in there and then, you know, thread your rope through and knot it underneath and get like a much sturdier handle that way. So that's up to you. Now for the sides, I did come back and I added two more dowels, kind of like set back a little bit on the left and the right sides of the first ones that I did. So I hope that kind of makes sense, but it kind of made almost like a little triangle here in the corner with the wooden dowels. And I think it just added a lot of texture and dimension and it really makes the sides look a lot more substantial, it gives them kind of that unique textured style as well. So I love how my favorite LED timer candles look in here. This trio looks amazing. And I've always wanted a lantern, like a DIY lantern that would be large enough to actually cluster all three of the candles in here so i am so obsessed with how cute this turned out this one is a set of candle holders and i just found these orbs these geometric orbs in dollar tree i thought they were really cool and i just knew right away that i wanted to make some candle holders with them so i used super glue to attach them although hot glue should also work you could use e6000 um, a lot of options here and i glued together to make a little set one of them two high and one set with three high definitely make sure that these are really dry and that your glues definitely had a chance to dry thoroughly and then you can go ahead and paint them however you like but first i want to go ahead and use two lids from these round cardboard boxes from Dollar Tree's craft section. These are very sturdy, but because they are just a like papery cardboard material, you'll only really want to use these with battery flameless like LED battery candles, which is what I'm planning to do. I love my LED battery operated timer candles. I love the fact that they're on a timer. They flicker very realistically. But anyway, you can paint these now however you like. So here is how they look if you just leave them completely natural. But I'm going to use some chalk paint and completely cover these entire candle holders. I love how they look. Um, all covered over just with some white chalk paint but you could also lightly kind of stipple on some brown or some gray paint to make this look more like actual stone if you like the look of that comment below would you keep these a solid color would you would you make them a solid color or do you think that they should be more dimensional something with like two or three colors kind of splotched on there and layered on there to look more like stone or yeah would you do a solid color what would be your preference So this one is really, really fun. I'm taking these hexagon planters from Dollar Tree and we're going to make a set of them in two different heights. So for the taller one, I did one planter upside down, another one on top of it right side up, and then another one upside down on top of that, and one more facing right side up. So it's four planters high. And then the second one is just two planters high. And the best way that I can find to glue them all together, honestly, was just hot glue because I did actually try the Gorilla Super Glue and that dried and then they came apart very easily. So the best thing I could find was hot glue. I pressed them together really well and guess what? The hot glue held just fine and I think it's going to last because I've used hot glue um, in years past to make DIYs to put outdoors planters or side tables and they have always held up and lasted me through the whole summer and then I had a really fun idea for how to color and paint these and I decided to just take some different spray paints that I had and basically I am decorating with kind of a peachy pink and coral color this year out here on the deck and so I wanted to do something that would kind of pull in those colors basically i am going for colors of coral light pink 
rose gold and I did have this like hammered stone paint so I put it, sprayed some of that in there for some texture but you can just mix it up and have fun with it and hopefully you know if you guys have some spray paints in colors that fit your decor especially if you're already doing other DIYs and stuff maybe you use blue silver gray maybe you do black and gold or you're into the terracotta colors you know you can use anything that you want obviously have fun with this and if you're trying to bring in multiple colors stand back at least like two feet so that when you spray it you don't get splotches of paint and you'll hopefully get more of like a mist so that you'll get more of like that watercolor effect like a watercolor tie-dye type effect on here the good thing is if you do get some spots like i did that were a little bit too thick you can take your next color and spray a little bit more of that on top and just kind of get your paint layered until you're liking the look and the combination and the textures in here. I'm going to go ahead now and arrange my plants for this one and I've got some tips and a little hack for you guys here. So for these they are not very large as far as like the opening space for how much dirt we can fit in here. So I did enough dirt to do maybe two inches across the bottom of this and I do have plenty of drainage holes like I showed you guys before. I drilled all of the holes in these planters and I was careful to line up the holes of each one on top of the other while I was stacking them so that the holes from the top are directly over the holes all the way to the bottom so the water can completely drain out of this planters no, with no issues. But now I'm going to add about two inches of dirt into the bottom and then I'm going to add my plants and let all the rest of the dirt from the clumps of plants kind of fill in the rest. And what I really was just envisioning with this, doing a thriller, a filler, and a spiller, which you guys may have heard if you've done much gardening or floral styling. And I know that that's really popular and it's so pretty. And to be honest, I've actually never designed my own planters with that um like plan of the thriller the filler and the spiller so my thriller is going to be these purple spiky plants i cannot remember the name of these and then my for my filler i wanted to bring in some of the pink color and so i was searching all over home depot and i just could not find that light shade of pink that i was looking for i actually found a hanging planter that was the perfect shade of pink and you know sometimes you can make use of that and it works out really well because all I needed to do was kind of carefully dig into that planter and cut out all the individual pink flower plants cut out each plant individually so that's kind of a little tip or trick to save some money and help you find the plants that you're looking for because just because you don't find them in the little mini pots to create your own planter you may be able to get a couple hanging plants and take them apart and reconstruct them into the color combinations that you want for your space I just absolutely love how this turned out. It was so creative, but so simple and so fun and easy to do. So I hope it gives you some ideas and inspiration. I'm actually cutting some pieces of these little wooden dowels. Now these I got in Walmart. They were 39 cents each for a three foot long thin wooden dowel and I'm cutting them into pieces to fit on here so this was really really affordable to do um, you could also use the pack of wooden dowels from Dollar Tree and actually those are a little bit thicker so they'd give you even a little bit better coverage gluing them on top of the metal spokes of this wheel next I took some rope once those were all in place I just took a little bit of nautical rope again you don't even need a whole pack you just need a little bit left over and I just glued that on going all the way around the outside of this wheel. 
You can totally leave the inside with natural wood, but I did decide to grab a paper towel and rub on a little bit of my antique wax. Again, you guys could use wood stain for this if you want. You could just paint the inside. You could paint them whatever color you like. And another option for stain is to just take a little bit of brown paint. You could even mix a little bit of like a Dollar Tree brown acrylic paint mix it with a little bit of water and dilute it and that'll give you kind of like a stain that you can brush on there if you don't have the antique wax i was debating if i wanted to put flowers in the middle of this but what i decided to do was glue on that metal heart i'm gluing that in the center it looks like it's kind of like that center of our wagon wheel but another alternative would be to put a sign in the middle and actually do like a welcome sign dollar tree often carries wooden plaques and wooden signs now in their craft supply section and from time to time i do see they have galvanized signs including ones that have the word welcome you could definitely use like a wooden plaque in the middle and write something on there or stencil something on there that would be really pretty as well but yeah i had this heart so i'm gonna just go ahead and use it because why not but at least that gives you guys a couple other options and then i wanted to add a vine on here around the outside i was trying to think if i'd rather do flowers on here or greenery but i ended up going with just some neutral greenery and here we go i'm gonna wind this vine in here and it was a little bit short so i ended up using two different vines i did try to stagger it so that where the leaves on the first vine ended up i tried to stagger the second one in there so that the leaves from the second one were kind of in between the leaves from the first one if that makes sense and i actually just left them on that like tan rope vine stuff that they come on i just felt like it added a little bit of bulk and made the outside rim the outside of this wheel a little bit more substantial so yeah i left it in place i didn't even take it off that and i didn't have to glue this on i actually just tucked the pieces of that tan rope vine stuff i just kind of tucked the ends into the other one and kind of tuck them in behind each other and they do bend a little bit so you can kind of bend them around that frame of the wreath and then just tuck them in around themselves and basically yeah as long as you tuck it in it stays in place and here is how it turned out you could put this on a front door it would be really pretty and i also tried styling this in our front um, entryway so you'll have to let me know which way you like it better styled in the entryway or out on the front door what are your thoughts? Where would you hang this one? So for this one, you're going to need 16 of the Square Mirrors Dollar Tree cells. You can find them in with the candle holders. So here I'm putting four of them together to make a larger square and I'm cutting a template out on, to measure that size on some poster board. You can actually skip that. You could just arrange them directly onto the foam board. I'm using a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree. You'll want to trace and cut out four squares of foam board. So use a pretty generous amount of hot glue now to glue the mirrors onto the foam board. And then we're going to attach it to the frame. For the frame, I've got four square wire wreath frames. I already spray painted these with some copper colored spray paint, but that's totally optional. You don't have to paint them or you could use any paint that you want. The foam board piece with the four mirror panels on it, I turn them upside down on top of a bottle of paint or a cup, something like that. So they're a little bit elevated so that the wreath frame can lay down on the back of it and touch it. So. We're gonna go all the way around the edge now with a really generous amount of hot glue to connect them and fill in any gaps all the way around. You wanna cover that whole wire edge so it's glued super securely onto the foam board and then let that completely dry. So for mine, in a couple of the spots, the wire was like a little bent and it wasn't totally touching the back of that foam board. It was kind of raised up a little bit. So I just went back a couple of times to make sure that I could totally fill in the area with hot glue. So basically every single area of the wire is connected to the foam board with hot glue, even if the hot glue is, you know, raised up a little bit. And I, it's a little thick. I had to fill in any gaps with the hot glue, but basically I want this super securely hot glued together. You definitely want this to hold. 
because we're gonna be hanging it on a wall. Now I did this for all four panels and now we can attach the four panels together. So I'm doing this on the diagonal. So this is gonna hang from the top point. I hung it up on the wall and then I'm using a heavy duty fishing line. I already had this and it is a super heavy duty fishing line. I'll see if I can link the one that I'm using down below. I actually got it years ago for crafting and it works great, but it's a very big roll actually. So it's lasted me for years and I still have a ton left. But basically I went around maybe 20 times, maybe more, I don't know, probably like 20 times with lots of knots. I just wanted to get this really, really tight and secure. And then we can tie the other two tiles now. Now that we have the second one hanging below the first one, you can do the other two, one on the left, one on the right. So this is basically going to be these four tiles together now, and it's gonna look like a large diamond shape, basically. So I just used more fishing line and wove it back and forth around and around where these wires touch to keep everything in place. I kind of did like figure eights around the wire to connect it here in between on the side panels, keep everything in place and lined up as neatly as possible that way. You could possibly even zip tie these together. I bet that would work, especially if you wanted to paint the zip tie the same color as the wire. But I really like the heavy duty fishing line because it's basically almost invisible. So like I said, I will try to link the one I'm using below if I can still find it because I did buy it years ago. But anyway, this made a really cool mirror tile statement wall art decor piece. It's gotten many compliments when guests come over and it's just a really cool neutral piece that could work with any decor first one i'm taking an 8x10 canvas from dollar tree and i'm gonna paint it over with some black chalk paint i got my black chalk paint in bulk on amazon last year and i will link it below but dollar tree is now carrying black chalk paint too so you can totally use one from dollar tree Set this aside to dry now, and I'm gonna take three acrylic paints from Dollar Tree and swirl them together, being careful not to fully combine them. You wanna keep your individual colors showing. So you can do this in whatever colors that you want, whatever will match your decor. I'm gonna go with some really neutral colors and use a brown, a peachy beige color and white and just swirl that all together and just get a really beautiful neutral soft earthy tones here and now i'm gonna take a small brush and then make one upward curved diagonal stroke across the canvas here this is going to be like a floral stem and then i'm going to take a flower petal you could obviously use a real petal i did not have any real flower petals so i just cut one off of one of my dollar tree floral bouquets and i'm going to just dip that in the paint carefully and then press it gently on either side of the stem in order to create the flower petals here. And this way each petal has all the colors in it that I've mixed here and just has a lot of beautiful variegation in the color. So pretty. I just used a single faux floral petal from a Dollar Tree flower bouquet to do this. You can make as many flower petals as you like on here. I did a few on each side. And then once this is dry, I'm gonna hot glue this canvas piece into the center of an 11 by 14 canvas. And now this is totally optional, but I love how it looks added into an 11 by 14 dollar store picture frame here. I absolutely love this idea and I love how this one turned out. The next one is also using one of these wooden framed art pieces from Dollar Tree. And for this one, I'm gonna actually pull it apart and I'm just going to use two pieces from the frame. I'm gonna use the two shorter ones but I'm definitely saving the longer ones for another DIY that I have in mind in the future. I used some scissors to kind of pull out the little metal clasps, so I just have a smooth piece of wood now. I am taking three of the wooden square pencil holders, just mixed a little antique wax in with some water and kind of created my own little DIY stain. You can obviously use any kind of wood stain. You can paint these. Um, you can also just mix some brown acrylic paint from Dollar Tree, mix it in with a little water and you'll have your own little DIY stain. So I just wanted to darken them just a touch. I basically wanted them to match the coloring of the wood that was already on those frames. Glue your three boxes together in a row and now I'm gonna take two of those little frames. I'm using 
You can use the shorter or the longer end, whatever works for you, and take two of them, and I'm gonna glue them sticking up like a little triangle here. So just a little hot glue on each end, and then I added a little bit down in the center here. You can even use some stones down in there and then add some succulents in the top. So really, whatever you like. I thought these looked really pretty. I, I feel like it looks kind of mid-century modern or boho. Um, I love the modern feel of this one. This is going to be a DIY Dollar Tree acrylic pour. It makes some beautiful paintings, some beautiful artwork on a budget. The first thing I did was pick out my paints. And like I said, I found all of these in Dollar Tree. Now I could not find tan or blush pink or any pink really besides this hot pink when I was in Dollar Tree, but I was excited to find this kind of peachy beige color along with some black. I did get some white paint and I picked up this hot pink. I already had this one from Dollar Tree tree as well but if you add the tiniest bit of this hot pink one in with some white paint you can create kind of a softer pinky tone so anyway that's what we're gonna do if you're looking for gray I don't know if they sell gray either but again if you mix the black and white you can get some gray paint this is gonna be an acrylic pour and I did pick up all my paint in Dollar Tree however the one thing that is not from Dollar Tree here is gonna be the Liquitex pouring medium so I got this in a gloss finish on Amazon and I will have it linked down below it's also linked I believe on my Amazon storefront so the pouring medium will not dilute your color at all you'll still get the same richness and whatever color that you make you'll still get your same color it's just going to make it easier to pour and then it will also help it dry to a nice smooth glossy finish and this particular one also helps it not get any air bubbles so mix your colors to get them how you want and you'll want the consistency to be kind of like a runny honey <laughs> <laughs> like a kind of like a thin honey I guess um, it can be the consistency of honey or a little bit thinner I guess you wouldn't want it too much thicker than honey or it may not pour very easily but anyway that's usually going to be about three to one ratio three parts liquitex to one part acrylic paint I layered all of the acrylic paints now into one larger cup and I just layered them all in here and I'm ready to pour now. So for this, I'm using one of the 11 by 14 Dollar Tree canvases, which by the way, if you want to put these in a frame later, you totally can because Dollar Tree does carry 11 by 14 uh, picture frames and you could just remove the glass from that and actually frame your canvas. So anyway, that's just a little hack a little tip for you guys but go ahead and pour this and I was not sure how much paint I needed so I ended up having to like mix a tiny bit more because it wasn't quite enough so I basically started in one corner and I just went back and forth back and forth all the way across diagonally to the opposite corner and like I said I mixed a little bit more to add on here and now I'm gonna go ahead and spread this out by tilting the canvas and just letting the paint flow and flood over the canvas and spread all by itself. And then obviously you wanna do this on top of something. So I have a, just a piece of foam board here, but definitely cover your work surface because there's going to be a lot of paint run off and i have just a planter a little dollar tree planter under here the foam board is also from dollar tree and i just i'm gonna set this um canvas on top of this little planter you just need like a little riser kind of something to hold it up so that as any extra paint flows off the edge your canvas is gonna dry like free and clear and just um, nice and evenly. And you could go ahead and just seal this now with an acrylic sealant um, and then go ahead and frame it. And I think this is so beautiful, but I actually wanted to try something on here that I thought would be really fun, which is adding in a little bit of um, metallic leafing. So I did pick up gold, silver, and copper leaf. This pack uh, comes with all three and i wanted to add a little bit of the rose gold copper metal metallic um metal leafing in here i'm um, to do this i've got a little bit of craft glue from dollar tree the metal leaf i did get on amazon but again this is optional you don't need this for an acrylic pour but in case you guys are curious like i was you can see how this kind of looks so what i did was very ever so slightly just to add the tiniest bit of glue where i wanted the metal leafing to adhere and I basically followed some of the lines and curves in the paint. Now, I've already let this dry for at least a day. 
so my paint is completely dry now and i just added little bits of glue on here and added in my metallic foil leaf i just kind of set this on here carefully and then let it all dry give it a chance to dry and then you'll be able to once it's completely dry come back in with a soft paintbrush a soft dry paintbrush and you can just brush away all of the extra metal leafing that's on here which i actually collected in this little bag because i think i may use that in another upcoming future project but you don't have to you could just throw away the excess it was a little bit time consuming but also kind of satisfying to do this and then i just let that completely um, dry make sure everything's totally dry on there before you start brushing away that extra metal leaf And once you've got it all cleaned off, you can see your final look here. And what I decided to do, you could, you could take some acrylic spray and finish this just to give it a nice final coat. But I actually took a gloss Mod Podge and brushed that on there. And that worked totally fine. It looks really good. I would just recommend, you kind of can see brush strokes if you put the Mod Podge on too thick and you don't get it like really smoothed out. A spray sealant for acrylic paint will give you a more even finish than the gloss Mod Podge, but this did work as well. And then last but not least, I spray painted a Dollar Tree frame with some rose gold spray paint and framed my canvas. And here is how it turned out. I just absolutely love it. And I currently have it up on the fireplace. So I hope that this gave you guys some ideas. If you wanted to do an acrylic cup pour on your own, you can totally do this from Dollar tray you'll just need a little bit of a pouring medium to mix in there with your paint but here is how it turned out you guys could do this with any colors that you like thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed these dollar tree diy room decor home decor pieces please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed consider subscribing before you go if you haven't already and as always i am wishing you a beautiful blessed day a happy new year and i will see you soon in the next one bye